Human Growth and Development. The study of human development helps nurses understand the influence and the shape of human growth and maturation. Maturation is the physical, intellectual, or emotional process of development. When we consider conception through newborn, conception occurs when the sperm penetrates and fertilizes a female egg. The nuclei of the two combine in a single cell with 23 chromosomes, and all the inherited characteristics are predetermined. For prenatal development, this is where conception to birth and it takes an average of 38 to 40 weeks, and it is divided into three specific periods, the zygote, the embryo, and the fetus. The zygote begins with conception, and it lasts about two weeks. The embryo is the third week after conception and lasts until the end of the eighth week. And the fetal period is the ninth week and then ends with birth. Teratogens, these are various poisons that can affect um, the unborn or the newborn and depend on the duration of the exposure, the amount of the teratogenic substance, the stage of development. Teratogens are classified into four various types. There's physical, um, an example is hyperthermia. Metabolic, example would be diabetes. Infection, example would be rubella. And drugs, the example would be alcohol. The newborn is given an APGAR rating at one minute and five minutes. This is based on their color, their heart rate, reflexes, muscle tone, and respiration. Each of these areas is scored as a zero or a, up to a two. The best APGAR score is a 10. What is considered normal is any score that is seven or greater. At this time, the nervous system will still be um, immature and newborns will respond through various reflexes. Infancy is considered two days until toddler. During this time, they have a rapid growth, rapid growth period. They need about 20 hours per day of sleeping. By five months, they should double in their birth weight and they should triple their birth weight within one year. Various vaccines are recommended and these are spaced throughout the first two years of life, and often they are given in a series of doses. So the recommended vaccines for newborns are diphtheria, measles, mumps, rubella, polio, tetanus, and pertussis. As a toddler, the child will begin to walk and run with ease. The time frame for this is 12 months to 36 months. During this time, the, the individual will be toilet trained, and often children learn bowel control before they learn bladder control. By the time the individual is three years old, they are easily ready to climb, run, and jump. Preschool, these are ages three to six. During this time, the individual becomes more independent and they focus on people and activities outside of their family unit. Middle childhood is considered from preschool years to adolescence. A child will start elementary school and this phase of development will last until the onset of puberty, which is roughly 12 years of age. Adolescence is considered ages 12 to 20. This is seen as a transition from childhood to adulthood in the United States. 
Puberty begins ages 13, 11 to 13, somewhere around there. Um, there are various hormonal changes that are triggered by the hypothalamus. Testosterone and estrogen will both stimulate the development of primary and secondary ca um, sex characteristics, and the individual will begin to develop their sense of identity. Young and middle adulthood, there is no specific age that actually signals an end of adolescence and then an achievement of adulthood. Um, if you were thinking about an, an age range, um, at 18, people are considered legally responsible in the United States for their actions. Yet at age 21, that is when someone is able to um, purchase alcohol. So there are various ages where individuals are provide on, provided with different freedoms or rights. Young adults, they like um, to explore higher education, careers, relationships, and commitments. Considering the cultural aspect, the definition of adulthood depends on the culture. Some cultures have rituals and role transitions that um, are created for the individual. Various role transitions that may mark adulthood might be voting, completing an education, leaving home, employment, financial independence. There are various transitions. Middle adulthood, they, um, the age range is said to be mid 40s through early 60s. There are various roles. The, they include adjusting to family and work, economic stability, um, maintaining a healthy life and physical well-being. Both genders will experience climactic. Females, it is menopause. So for us females, it is the sensation of menses. This is a progressive decrease in both estrogen and progesterone. For males, their climatic Climateractic is gradual and less dramatic. So they have a gradual decline in testosterone and sperm counts. However, males do not lose the ability to father children as long as they can produce sperm. Late adulthood, the age is um, defined by the government um, and it is marked as people age 65 and older. This is when they are um, to gain access to Medicare. So that is the government funded um, health insurance for older individuals. Gerontology, this is a multidisciplinary study of the aging process. This includes studying both the mental, the physical, and the societal changes that impact with everyone's age. Older adults are considered age 80 and older. Oftentimes these individuals will have limited functionality and they can have a higher rate of age-related age -related health issues. Growing older does bring inevitable changes. Uh, menopausal women uh, lose bone mass and this will increase the risk of osteoporosis. Uh, there are postural changes. This is due to the shift in gravity. As with age, there is a loss of bone and muscle mass. There is joint stiffness, a diminished range of motion that can affect both balance and strength. The heart valves will thicken and become more rigid. There is a loss of elasticity in blood vessels. The gag reflex diminishes. Peristalsis of the bowel decreases. The external sphincter of both the bladder and the rectum will weaken. Skin continues to lose elasticity. It 
Wrinkles will appear, the skin will thin and become more drier, making it more fragile and, po and prone to skin tears. Older individuals have a loss of adipose tissue. Nails will become brittle and dull. Hair will turn gray and loss is common during older age. Working memory may decline and reacts, reaction time does slow. There are various changes in sight, hearing, taste, uh, peripheral vision diminishes, conductive hearing loss can occur, uh, number of taste buds will actually decrease, and the sleep patterns change that can cause fatigue and a decline in both strength and endurance. There are various developmental theories that help individuals understand human growth and development. One is Sigmund Freud and his psychosexual development. According to Freud, each stage is associated with an age, a body part, and a developmental, ach developmental achievement. The oral stage is, begins at birth until 18 months. And at this stage, the mouth for the individual is the focus of gratification and pleasure. The anal stage begins at 18 months and lasts to around three years. And this is where the individual finds gratification in bowel and bladder control. The phallic stage is ages three to six years. This is where the young child will become aware of their body. They may um, enjoy self-masturbation, undressing, and walking around naked. These are various typical behaviors for this age group. The Oedipus complex is when boys begin to develop an unconscious sexual attraction to their mother and that they perceive their father as a rival for the mother's attention. The Electra complex is the same for girls. This is where girls develop a sexual attraction unconsciously toward their father and their mother is now viewed as a competitor for the father's affection. The latency stage is ages six to 12 years. During this time period, children are seen as suppressing their sexual desires toward more socially acceptable activities. The genital stage for Freud, this begins with the onset of pu puberty and it lasts throughout the adult life. Erickson looks at psychosocial development. There are eight stages and according to Erickson, the individual must successfully pass through the stage to have a fully developed life. So the first one is trust versus mistrust. This is infancy. During this time, the infant begins to trust that when they cry, Someone will come and tend to their needs. If their needs go unmet, the individual, when they get to be an adult, will have a more difficult time trusting others. Autonomy versus shame and doubt. This is where a toddler will develop a sense of independence and autonomy. Oftentimes, this is where the toddler will imitate other individuals and they actually begin to mature. Initiative versus guilt is the preschool. During this time frame the child continues to explore their environment and the children learn basic skills that need to be mastered in the world around them. The next is industry versus inferiority and this is during childhood. These individuals become more aware of themselves. They start to learn complex skills like reading, writing, arithmetic, telling time. The fifth one is identity versus role confusion. This is during adolescence. This is seen as a transitional stage 
that is characterized by rapid and dramatic physiological, emotional, and social changes. Intimacy versus isolation is early adulthood. This is where the individual begins to form intimate and committed relationships. Generativity versus stagnation is middle adulthood. Here the individual will reflect on their accomplishments and they want to help support future generations. And last is integrity versus despair. This is in late adulthood. Here the individual will contemplate and reflect upon their life. They will look back and they will look at their accomplishments and their failures. Two other developmental theories that we use to help understand individuals is Jean Piaget and his theory on cognitive development. This theory describes how an individual acquires knowledge, intellect, and cognition. For Piaget, there are four stages. Sensory motor is um, birth to two years. During this stage, the individual will form distinct phase of human and cognitive development. Here they learn object permanence. They understand that just because they cannot see the object, that it still exists. They also learn that they are separate from the, their environment. The pre-operational stage is two to six years old. Here the child thinks symbolically. They use imagination and memory. They engage in fantasy and make-believe when they are playing. These young individuals are very egocentric. To them, they are the center of the universe and they are not able to understand others' viewpoints. For concrete operations, this is six to 12 years. Here, the thinking is literal. Sometimes it is extremely rigid. They are becoming more adept at using some logic. The formal operation stage is 12 years to adulthood. Here, the individual has abstract thinking, hypoth hypothetical reasoning. They can draw logical conclusions. They can organize thoughts, problem solve and perform deductive reasoning. The last theorist is Lawrence Kohlberg. This gentleman has a theory on moral development and, in the, and changes in the thoughts, emotions, and behaviors that influence one's beliefs about right and wrong. For the pre-conventional stage, it begins at four years to 10 years. So as you can see, at this stage, the individual needs to have some understanding. This child still is thinking egocentrically, but they are guided by a reward and punishment system. The conventional stage is 10 to 13 years. These individuals will follow the rules, they will listen to authority figures, and they believe that the authorities can help determine what is right and that disobeying the rules is considered wrong. The post-conventional level, this is adolescence through adulthood. This is based on one's personal moral code. Here, the individual will act accordingly to their own principles and beliefs. For the prenatal development stage, some of the high risks and concerns are Down syndrome or known as trisomy 21. Here, an individual is born with an extra copy of chromosome number 21. This is probably the most uh, pre prevalent genetic disorder, and it causes intellectual disabilities. Spina bifida 
is a neural tube deficit. This occurs in the lumbosacral region of the spine. This is the second most common cause of birth defects. This involves both genetics, environment, and nutritional factors. Anytime that the neural system is underdeveloped, one thinks that the mother may have had a low folic acid intake. Fetal alcohol syndrome. This is triggered when the mother's um, blood passes to the fetus through the umbilical cord and the mother has been drinking. This will also cause developmental disabilities. Infancy through toddler. Here children are growing rapidly and steadily and then they achieve many developmental milestones. One risk or concern is failure to thrive. These are children whose weight or rate of weight gain is lower than others at the same age and of the same gender. Autism spectrum disorder. This affects communication, socialization, and behavior. Child maltreatment. This is any abuse or neglect of children younger than age 18. This includes physical and emotional, sexual um, abuse and neglect and negligence. During childhood, this is a period of slow and steady growth. This is ages six to 12. Accidents or unintentional injuries are the number one cause of injuries to children. Often it is due to burns, drowning, falls, uh, could be poisonings, bike or motor vehicle accidents. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. This is an ongoing pattern of inattention or hyperactivity and impuls impulsivity that interferes with the child's functioning or development. Asthma is a chronic respiratory disease, and most children will display symptoms before the age of five. Obesity is a huge health concern. This increases the child's risk for diabetes, hypertension, cardiac issues, pulmonary issues, musculoskeletal problems, and psychological disorders. This can increase the individual's um, feelings of low self-esteem and it can increase the risk for depression. Adolescence is seen as a time of rapid growth and development. This is a, has dramatic physiological and hormonal changes with puberty. This affects appearance, um, an increase in cognitive development because at, at in adolescence, the individual is able to hypothesize and think abstractly. One risk or concern is substance abuse. Oftentimes, a peer will be smoking a cigarette or drinking alcohol. That will entice maybe another um, young individual to partake. Eating disorders which are anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa. These are both psychological disorders that involve extreme eating forms or eating behaviors. For anorexia nervosa, the individual is 15% below the ideal body weight. The individual has an intense fear of gaining weight. So signs and symptoms that might be seen are extreme weight loss, um, not uh, meeting expected developmental weight gains, uh, thin appearance, amenorrhea, dizziness or fainting, thinning or um, loss of hair, cold intolerance, dehydration, or low blood pressure. Bulimia nervosa, these are cycles of eating enormous amounts of food followed by vomiting. Oftentimes, the individual will use laxatives, diuretics, and or engage of hours of activity exercise to lose weight. Signs and symptoms would include preoccupation with being overweight, 
uh, strict dieting followed by um, high calorie eating binges, feelings of out of control, uh, disappearing from the meal times, frequent use of laxatives or diuretics, excessive exercising, irregular menstrual cycles. Depression is also associated with the bio, biochemical changes in brain, high levels of stress and anxiety, and depression can affect the personal, academic, social, and family life of the adolescent. In adulthood, muscular strength and coordination will slowly begin to decrease. There is a gradual decline in cardiac output. Skin and muscle tone, as well as elasticity of the skin, will begin to diminish. The hair begins to turn gray and thins. Heart disease is the major cause of death for adults. It is an umbrella term that does include coronary artery disease, arrhythmias, congenital heart defects, and hypertension. Cancer is the second leading cause of death. This is a group of diseases that are characterized by uncontrolled growth and spread of abnormal cells. Type 2 diabetes is a chronic metabolic disorder. This can lead to persistent hyperglycemia and can be due to either impaired insulin secretion insulin resistance, or both. Late adulthood, this is going to be the fastest growing population of individuals. One of the risks and concerns is osteoporosis. With the loss of estrogen in females due to menopause, uh, the bone density will be lost and this can cause bones to become weak and more brittle, leaving them more prone to fractures. Alzheimer's disease, this is a progressive irreversible brain disorder. This slowly destroys memory and thinking skills. Eventually the individual with Alzheimer's will be unable to perform their own activities of daily living. 